Assalamu alaikum, this is Shwama Tazara and today our topic of discussion is gonorrhea. Now, uh, in this video, uh, we're going to discuss what are the causative organisms of this disease, what are the clinical features, how this disease is transmitted, how we can diagnose a patient of gonorrhea and at the end, after diagnosis, how we can effectively manage a patient of gonorrhea. Fine. Uh, so, uh, starting our discussion, first of all, what is the causative organism? So, causative organism of gonorrhea is from the name gonorrhea, it's Nizaria gonorrhea, which is a gram negative intracellular diplococci or cocci as someone proceeds by their own, uh, pronounces by uh, different ways. Fine. Then, talking about its mode of transmission. Now, most important is that this disease, this uh, bacteria, sorry, is transmitted sexually. So, it is a sexually transmitted disease and uh, how it is trans when it transmits, then it produces endocervical cervical infection. Okay, it can also transmit by transmucosal route or by the receptive anal sex which produces rectal infection. Thirdly, it can transmit by receptive oral sex producing pharyngitis in the patient. Fourthly, by the, like these infective genital secretions, when our eyes are exposed to them or uh, then they can lead to the uh, infection of our eyes, that is ophthalmic infection. And fifth, it can transmit from mother to its neonate, that is its, her child, during childbirth through of course through the birth canal because that is completely infected so this is the whole of its transmission okay now talking about the clinical features clinical features is like how the patient will present to us first of all they will be very important sign excessive purulent discharge from the vagina will be seen second patient will have lower abdominal pain and thirdly, uh, there will be dysuria, means painful urination. Okay, now uh, one point uh, I have not written here, that is uh, that when we examine the female, that is speculum examination, uh, there uh, we will see cervicitis, like inflammation, that is inflammation of the cervix with or without mucopurulent discharge seen within it. So, that is important. Moving on, that how this disease uh, spreads and what are the complications of this uh, disease so to, how it spreads is first of all the uh, disease basically if we talk about its spread if we uh, remember the anatomy of the uh, pelvic area so surrounding there are two major uh, uh, you can say glands that is one is skin glands and the second are the Bartholin glands skin glands are present between the urethral opening and anterior wall of the vagina this is urethral opening and anterior wall of vagina between them are present skin gland so inflammation means infection can spread to this gland leading to skinitis it's the, it's the female prostate gland okay and around this vaginal opening are present two glands means a pair of gland called bartholin glands okay so infection can spread to these Bartholin glands leading to Bartholinitis okay and then infection can spread upward way, uh, to the uh, areas of the pelvis causing pelvic inflammatory disease then it can spread into the blood which we call the hematogenous spread and it can produce disseminated gonococcal infection also called the septicemia now it is a severe complication how will the patient presents that uh, she uh, or he will have non uh, blanching purulent, uh, pur purpuritic, purpuritic like purpuras are formed, but it's non blanching rash present on, on her body plus pain of her joints, arthralgia, and arthritis. Now, arthritis is typical, which involves one of the major weight bearing joint like our knee is our weight bearing joint, then our hip joint is our weight bearing joint. So, inflammation of any of these joints, fine, then it can spread of course to the liver also because it has gone into the blood so perihepatitis can be its complication and uh, talking of uh, uh, fallopian tubes fallopian tubes that uh, they are also involved in the inflammation and that is called salpingitis okay now this salpingitis is a major complication why because it can cause 
scarring of the tubes make it more adhes adhesive so uh, there is high risk of developing ectopic pregnancy so this is a very important you can say or a major complication of gonorrhea now talking about that how we will diagnose a patient of gonorrhea so first of all testing will be done in all those females who are previously infected by sexually transmitted infections like they have a history of it or the females who are symptomatic we go for testing in those females okay now just to remember the diagnostic points which is the causative organism that is a bacteria so we will perform some test to isolate the bacteria since it's a gram negative bacteria so gram staining is done here okay what we'll see in gram staining gram negative intracellular diplococci are seen okay second test will be culture and sensitivity to isolate the bacteria from the uh, vaginal discharge and the uh, lesions produced third is the nat test now nucleic acid amplification test they are most sensitive and specific test for the diagnosis of uh, gonorrhea now since it can uh, uh, infect the urethra also so uh, urine tests are performed and in them we can isolate bacteria also that is nizaria gonorrhea lastly we'll screen for other sexually transmitted diseases especially chlamydia trichomatis why because there is an evidence that a patient can have dual infection of nizaria plus chlamydia so by diagnosing it we can treat the patient adequately okay moving on to the treatment how we will treat a patient of gonorrhea first of all our ideal regimen is third generation cephalosporins plus azithromycin so which third generation cephalosporin we prefer that is long acting ceftriaxone im injection 250 mg plus oral azithromycin 1 g this is given simultaneously on the same day if ceftriaxone is not available then we go for cefixime oral plus oral azithromycin so oral azithromycin is common in all the regimens and if the patient is penicillin allergic means a severe penicillin allergic reaction has occurred in that patient then the combination is we go for gemifloxacin plus oral azithromycin or gentamicin im injections plus oral azithromycin the same 1 g and for chlamydia trichomatis uh, we go for do doxycycline 100 mg and that is given orally twice daily so this is the whole treatment that we do in this uh, patient of uh, gonorrhea so uh, i this is all about gonorrhea i hope you like the video if you do so please like share and comment my video and again it's a request please share it with all your medical fellows so that max can avail the benefit from this whole struggle thank you so much allah hafiz see you in the next video